love a standing O for Edward Norton. Come on, bud. Welcome back. I've missed having you on the show. I know. It's great. Great to uh, be back. I feel like we're, we're back alive again. Yeah. It yeah. feels right. Everyone. We got crowds. We have audiences great. in the building. <laughs> we just had puppies predict March Madness. And uh, I thought since staying with the basketball theme, I was going to talk to you a little bit about basketball. And then I was doing, I remembered that you dunked famously in the movie, in, in oh. American History X. This is you, this is you dunking the ball. You, not many people can say they dunked on film before, but you have. Do you um, remember, uh, do you remember getting air uh, on this? Uh, there's a lot to say about this. Um, <laughs> I was very um, pumped up on, you know, for that film. You were jacked. And everybody thought that equated to vertical um, jumping capability, right? So we get out there to shoot it. They're going to do these special shots to, to get the dunk. And um, where, where are you filming it? Uh, in the Venice basketball courts, right? So there's a lot of real players all around and everything yeah. like that. And they say, uh, where, do you, where do you want us to set the rim? And I said, uh, oh, I, don't, I don't know, you know not, nine feet, nine feet. That should, should be yeah, good, right? Yeah, that's my right? dude. That's Edward yeah. Norton. No, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. I, um, <laughs> look, I, I'm, I was prison body on top and like legs of a, of a Kenyan marathon runner on the bottom. <laughs> like, I, I, no, they put me in sweatpants to hide the differential between up here and down here. So I miss. So I, I'm, I'm like, I'm banging the ball up against the underside that's of the rim dunking... at, nine, at nine feet. <laughs> So then, up. so then the worst possible thing, which is they have to lower it in front of everybody, right? So I'm already catching that <laughs> They lower it, and it's still not enough. And I'm getting more and more tired. At the end of the day, basically, I put my hand as high as I could reach. They put the rim at my wrist. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm basically my... <laughs> This is like a nerve hoop on the no, back of a closet somewhere. It, it is in a bedroom. I am. I'm standing <laughs> on the ground in that shot. That's, that is. That is the honest. Movie truth. magic. And I'm. I'm actually. You're, I'm getting. I'm getting embarrassed at the memory <laughs> of the cat calls. Sorry. Sorry. So can we go to something? I yes. Did, of course did, we can. Yes. We can go right I did one. well let's in a about, film. Let's talk about Glass acting. Onion, by the way, because that was gigantic. Yes. You yeah. were great. You were fantastic in that. Uh, when we first meet your, uh, your character, Miles, Miles Braun, uh, you're playing guitar. And I know you play some guitar, but you were playing Blackbird pretty well. I was like, is that really you, or did you lower the rim on this one? No, so, so that, I, I, like you, I, I, I'm an amateur guitar player. I, I can play Blackbird, and I think maybe that's why I got the part. Um, because he, he was supposed to be playing Blackbird specifically at that point, and Ryan Johnson, the director, said, can oh. you play it? I, I said, actually, I can. Um, so I, so yes, I, I was playing it in that. The the thing is though, I don't. You sit in sometimes, right? Like you, I remember you at the Saturday Night Live 40th party. You were, yeah, you, you were fun. sitting in. But I think if you play guitar a little, you know, you. you I have these dreams like where Springsteen has called me on stage, <laughs> and I. And I'm failing. Like, do you have guitar fail dreams? Oh my gosh, I have just nothing but fail dreams. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Like, made a career out of it. I, I, yeah. I, that's why I'm a comedian. No, <laughs> yeah. But the, the funny thing, and the funny thing on that one was because there's this. It does. Enough people have seen the movie. I don't think it ruins it that my character is kind of revealed to be a, a pretentious idiot. Yeah. Right. He. But we. Ha I had this. You're a Beatles aficionado. I. I really wanted that. She comes up and she says, "You're playing my song." And he says, "Yeah, on the guitar he wrote it on." Oh yeah, and it's so supposed to be like, like he actually guy. bought things. Paul McCartney. And I, I said to Ryan, "What if can I say like on the guitar John wrote it on, Ooh. because McCartney wrote, wrote it, and this would be good because like inside, yeah, inside baseball, but another level on which he's an idiot, right? Yeah. I thought it'd be great. And basically, Ryan was like, was like, I'm not getting into the McCartney Lennon authorship wars. <laughs> He's like, no, and I said, Paul will get it. Paul is cool. Yeah. He, he'll, no, he, no, he's like, no. He, he, uh, Paul said, he was by not, the way, the fact that Paul said yes to even letting Glass Onion be used, I'm like, yeah, dude, that was just, yeah, it was I, masterful. Oh, that's hilarious. I, I thought I'm it would be to a good, good joke to attribute Blackbird to John Lennon. I found a photo that I wanted to show you that I, I think this is actually, you said it up perfectly without even knowing I'm going to show you this. But this is a photo of you from, I think this is 2001. Here's Paul McCartney playing guitar, Eric Clapton behind him, and in between, <laughs> very. <laughs> Are you having? Are you having a nightmare? Are you having a? That's Where two of the greatest guitarists. That? Like, dude, I mean, do, do you remember first of all, where? It's an incredibly weird picture because it looks like I'm trying to tune Clapton's guitar while he's playing it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry, like, it's Mr. like I'm, I'm, you're a little flat. You're a little flat, <laughs> Mr. Eric. Let me, Eric, let me Kinner, I'll help you but with also, that. Also, I'm sitting here thinking like. 
Did I have such a hit movie that I felt I belonged on the stage? <laughs> yes, with you Clapton do. And things like, what is going I've on? I've seen there? you play with Eddie Vedder. Was that? Was that? I, I've, I've told you somewhere. I, <laughs> I sat in once with Eddie Vedder. Yeah, so you know what you're it, talking about. No, no, it was the it was the most nerve wracking performance experience of my life. <laughs> Because I, he, he said, why don't you just sit in for one song? So I said, let's play Guaranteed. This is at the Beacon. This is at our hometown theater here, yeah, right? New York. I'm like, let's play Guaranteed. I know Guaranteed pretty well, right? Right before we go out and do it. And his, his fans are intense, man. You don't mess with, like, the Eddie. I was like, I could get booed. Oh, yeah. I, I go out, right? Bam. I'm like, okay, I can play Guaranteed well enough that this will go fine. And then he's like, right before, he, he goes, take a verse. Take a verse. I'm like, I'm not singing with you. No, yeah, I'm I don't know. I'm, a, I'm barely like, doing this. Take a this. verse. Take a verse. And Eddie's voice sounds like it's rising from the mantle of the earth. You know, it's like this huge thing. <laughs> and I, I open my mouth, and it's like Bob Dylan and Ellie Goulding have had a had a baby, <laughs> right? It's just a disaster. It's like you don't no. want to you don't want to sing next to yeah, Eddie Vedder. You just want to tune his guitar. That's all you want to exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like you got to be very careful about sitting in with the pros. Uh, Extra extrapolations. Yeah. We have to talk about the, your, your show. Extrapolations. The cast, by the way, is it? Yeah, the show's. It's on Apple TV Plus. The cast. I'm just going to run through some names here. No order. Uh, Sienna Miller, Kit Harrington, David Schwimmer, David Diggs, Toby McGuire, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Murray Bartlett, Meryl Streep. Yeah. Marion Cotillard. Marion Cotillard. Yeah. They said they said Meryl Streep, Marion Cotillard. I was like, I don't care what it's about. I'm I mean, in. Right, but um, and then I didn't get to work with either of them, which which. Yeah, you were saying sucked. this. You were saying this. You're <laughs> no, not... it's like an all star. It, it, um, I think a way to look at this is is uh, it's sort of like the black. If you like Black Mirror, you know the yes. way that Black Mirror comments on technology. Love, yes. which I I was obsessed with that show. This this is very much like a Black Mirror for for future environmental kind of consequence and catastrophe. It's yeah. really really creative. It's rooted in science, but it's. Some of them are funny. Some of them are, are really dramatic and kind of terrifying and dystopian. And it just, I think that it's, it's entertaining as hell, but it's, but it's a really great provocation to get us to think about what might actually be coming um, yeah. on an environmental level, not just a technological level. Since and I've it's, known it's, you, you've always been active in, uh, in, in the environment, saving the environment, and uh, you know, watching out for the climate change and all this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's not, I, I, honestly, I, it's nice when the thing you do, when you have the opportunity to, to wrestle with some of those complicated questions and challenges that we're facing, you know, within the work. Um, I mean, it's I, still I think, entertaining. Yeah, it, it is entertaining. It's very entertaining, but I, it's not preachy. It's it it really basically deals with how difficult this is going to be to make these complicated decisions. And how life you know? is going to be if, yeah. if in the future. Yeah. It starts it's, in, what, it, 2037 or what? Yeah, it? and it, it, it advances through time um, as the episodes go. But but I I think, you know, I, I look, we, we live in a very, we live in an age of, of distraction and, and of uh, a lot, a lot a, there's a lot of challenges to life. And I think, I think the most it asks of people is really that, you know, this this is... This is going to be the challenge of our era. I think we, we will be remembered mostly for how we deal with this issue of, of ecological sustainability and whether we, we set things in motion that, that future generations are dealing with. And, and I think all this really asks you to do is, is, is not be complacent, you know, to at least meditate on, on the consequences of these decisions that we're making right now and, and think a little bit about what it's actually going to look like if we don't act. What would you say for someone who, who wants to uh, get uh, get involved? Or... You know, again, I, it's it's hard to. Um, I mean, in, in the old days, like I think we liked hearing things that you know, changing light bulbs and this and that. But we know that that's not th those things aren't really what it's about. It's about policy. It's about governments, and that's why a lot of people feel that it's beyond their capability. I I think we've got to vote. We've got to bring in a generation of leaders who who put this. Who believe that this is a priority and make it a priority, um, but also I just I just think you know I think of uh, there's a line in the, uh, of Hemingway's that's cited in in the episode I'm in that uh, the world is a fine place and worth fighting for, and I think I think that we've got to push against complacency. P I, I think we can't afford as a generation and our kids we can't be complacent about this. It's it's too consequential. Yeah, good for you.
Well said. I want to show everyone a clip. Here's Edward Norton in Extrapolations. Take a look at this. The real reckless experiment is the one civilization has been running. Nobody was trying to change the climate. We, we didn't even think that we had that capacity. We, we didn't know better, but we do now. And yet, human behavior doesn't change. The sky is easier to re-engineer than the human brain, John. Exactly. And if, and if you tell that greedy monkey brain it's cooled off and everything's OK, it's going to say, give me a little bit more. Just let uh. me burn a little bit more. Just let, me, just let me mortgage a little more of the children's future so that I can make sure I can choose this quarterly balance sheet. I just need that one. It's, 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 Gita, Gita. Even if you got all of, of the chemical interactions right, if you got the dispersal pattern right, the, the, the problem here is bigger than the heat of the sun, Gita. It's, it's the way we see the world. Edward Norton, everybody. Extrapolations is streaming now on Apple TV+. We'll be right back with Ego Wodum. Stick around, everybody. Hey, hey.